Welcome to the Ultimate Life Television Program, brought to you by Pastor Gracia Selassie Awie of Treasure House ICGC, where you are treasured and not trashed. Welcome to the Ultimate Life Broadcast. I'm your host, Gracia Selassie Awie, Pastor of Treasure House ICGC. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's life above the ordinary. It's called the ultimate life. On this program, you are presented with a blueprint for the ultimate life. So expect to be changed, expect to grow, expect the ultimate life. We continue with our series, Honor Life Heads. Esther chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 1 to 13. On the night, the, on, on, on that night, forgive me, on that night, the king could not sleep. And he gave orders to bring the book of memorable deeds the chronicles and they were read before the king and it was found written uh, how Mordecai had told uh, about Bithana and Teresh two of the king's eunuchs who uh, guarded the threshold and who had sought to lay hands on King ah Ahasuerus and the king said what honor or distinction has been bestowed on Mordecai for this. I pray for you that if you've been forgotten, may the books of remembrance be opened so you'll be remembered and be rewarded in the name of Jesus. What honor or distinction has been bestowed on, Mordec on, on, on Mordecai for this? The king's young men who attended him said, nothing has been done for him. And the king said, who is in uh, the court? Who is in the court of the king's palace to speak to the king about having Mordecai hand on the gallows that he had prepared for him. Have I, have I skipped this? Okay, I'll go back to it. It says, the king's young men who attended him said, nothing has been done for him. And the king said, who is in the court? Yeah, I think I skipped it. I skipped some. Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the king's palace to speak to the king about having Mordecai hang on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And the king's young men told him, Haman is here, or Haman is there, standing in the court. And the king said, let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king said to him, what should be done to the man whom the king delights to honor? And Haman said to himself, whom would the king delight to honor more than me? And Haman said to the king, For the man whom the king delights to honor, let royal robes be brought, which the king has worn, and the horse that the king has ridden, and uh, on whose head a crown is set, and let the robes and the horse uh, be handed over to the one to, to one of the king's most noble officials. Let them dress the man whom the king delights to honor, and let them let let them uh, lead him on the horse through the square of the city, proclaiming before him, "That shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor." Then the king said to Haman, "Hurry, take the ropes and the horse, as you have said, and do so to Mordecai the Jew who sits at the king's gate. Leave out nothing that you have mentioned." So Haman took the robes and the horse and he dressed Mordecai and led him through the square of the city, proclaiming before him, that shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Then Mordecai returned to the king's gate. But Haman hurried to his house, mourning and with his head covered. And Haman told his wife, Zeresh, and all his friends, everything that had happened to him. Then his wife, then, then his wife's men, then his wise men and his wife, Zeresh, said to him, If Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall, is of the Jewish people, you will not overcome him, but will surely fall before him. The Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Mordecai was honored, and Haman ended up being hung on the gallows he made for Mordecai. God is able to influence, even though you not being able to sleep god is able to influence even through you not being able to sleep i'll say that again god is able to influence even through you not being able to sleep you are sitting up and texting someone god is working in everything 
you've got to learn how to handle life's heads because they are more than just the inconvenience the little discomfort there's something much bigger sometimes god will allow things and in the end he will use it for his glory i want to ask you today are you being hurt by someone don't react and don't just and, and don't just look at that because there might be a bigger blessing that's coming that's why god is allowing it you remember in december uh 2010 it was reported that 25 year old uh joanna yates was missing they couldn't find her body she left her keys and phone in a flat so they began the investigation she lived in a flat in bristol the landlord also lived in the building and the, and the police decided to question him his name is christopher jeffries the minute they laid eyes on him they noticed he was a weirdo he was a retired schoolmaster impeccable reputation but he had an odd way about him his hair was long and it blew in the wind he lived by himself highly educated man he was arrested for 48 hours the press really hurt him they began to publish stories about him he was they called him Pippin tom he was responsible for the murder of another woman they even suspected him fiddling with a boy at the school when up until that point his reputation was absolutely perfect his life became so miserable he had to go into hiding he couldn't go out into public after 48 hours he was released and he wasn't even charged on the 20th of january they actually found the killer a guy from holland they found his dna and blood in the boot of his car he was clearly convicted and given a 20 year sentence but this man's life was ruined forever he was so badly hurt he couldn't go out in public so one day he wakes up and he decided he was going to sue the newspapers he won the case against them and he was given half a billion pounds, 500,000 pounds. You must see what he looks like now. His life has changed, his hair is cut, he's living well. What you think is hurt can turn out to be your life's blessing. This man is living different to what he ever lived. It's not the person who hurts you, who controls you. It's Jesus who controls your life. And he can cause things to happen. He can stop things from happening. I love the way God stopped Abimelech from touching Sarah, Abraham's wife, when she was in Egypt. Book of Genesis, chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 1 to 18. From there, Abraham sojourned toward the territory of the Negev and lived between Kadesh and Shur. And he sojourned in Gera. And Abraham said to Sarah, his wife, She's my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gera, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she's a man's, for, for she's a man's wife. Now Abimelech had not approached there. So he said, Lord, will you kill an innocent people? Did he not himself say to me, She's my sister? And she herself said, he's my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands, I have done this. Then God said to him in the dream, yes, I know that you have done this in the integrity of your heart. And it was I who kept you. Take note, it was I who kept you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. Now then, return the man's wife, for he's a prophet. So that he will pray for you and you shall live but if you do not return her know that you shall surely die die and you and all yours so abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told them all these things and the men were very much afraid then abimelech called abraham and said to him what have you done to us and how have i sinned against you that you have brought on me and my kingdom a great sin you have done to me things that i ought i 
that ought not to be done. You have done to me things that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, what did you see that you did this thing? Abraham said, I did it because I thought there is no fear of God at all in this place. And they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she is indeed my sister, the daughter of my father, though not the daughter of my mother, and she became a wife. And when God caused me to wander from my father's house, I said to her, this is the kindness you must do to me. At every place to which we come, say of me, he's my brother. Then Abimelech took sheep and oxen and male servants and female servants and gave them to Abraham and returned Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, behold, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. To Sarah, he said, behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. It is a sign of your innocence in the eyes of all who are with you. And before everyone, you are vindicated. Then Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, and also healed his wife and female slaves, so that they bore children. For the Lord had closed all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. The Lord prevented him from going near to her. God can cause things to happen. He can stop things from happening. Margaret Clarkson said, God is the Lord of human history and of the personal history of every member of his redeemed family. Expect the right things from people and the right things from God is the next point. Expect the right things from people and the right things from God. You should expect people to be people. Too many people expect too much from people. If your highest hope is fallible man, you will eventually be disappointed. Yet, on the other hand, if you are so afraid of disappointment, you become cynical. You will never build bridges with anyone. You've got to have a relationship with God that's healthy and sound than a relationship with people. You can be hit by your pastor. If your relationship with your pastor is stronger than your relationship with God, notice what Solomon says in the book of Ecclesiastes. I said you can be hurt by your pastor if your relationship with your pastor is stronger than your relationship with God. Notice what Solomon says in the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 8 verse 9. He says, I have thought deeply about all that goes on here under the sun where people have the power to hurt each other. What we've got to do is if people have got the power to hurt us we've got to temper our expectations if you expect too much from people you'll be hurt by people expect people to be people then you won't be faced i come to church my eyes are on god and i trust my pastor but if he hurts me well people are people you carry on serving god you carry on coming to check if you are in a marriage i can't believe my wife said this to me i deserve to be happy no don't expect too much from her have your eyes on god when when your vertical relationship is stronger than your your horizontal relationship your life will be good i'll say that again when your vertical relationship is stronger than your horizontal relationship your life will be good but when you trust people more than you trust god you will always be hurt and you always be disappointed. You always be disappointed. Oswald Chambers, Oswald Chambers said this: If I'm devoted to the cause of humanity only, I will soon be exhausted and come to the place where my love will falter. But if I love Jesus Christ personally and passionately, I can serve humanity. Though men treat me as a doormat, when my relationship with God is right, everything else fits into perspective. And so it's very important to expect the right things from people and the right things from God. Otherwise, you go from church to church, job to job, partner to partner, looking for the ideal situation, which you will never find. Next point, don't rehearse your heads, rehearse your healing. Don't rehearse your heads, but rehearse your healing. Stop telling your story. Oh, you won't believe what they said, what they did to me. Speak your future. Don't let your head define you. Don't let it become your identity. Don't be known by the insult or injury. I love it when people move beyond what happened in their lives. Thank God 
we've all got a testimony but you can't live with your testimonies being the prime thing when people meet you oh so you, you were a drug addict so you were an alcoholic so you were into prostitution isn't that awesome no they need to forget who you were don't keep introducing yourself as the ex stop speaking your head start speaking your healing how many of you have heard about josh mcdowell an amazing author and teacher an amazing author and teacher written a number of amazing books he's written over a hundred books a foremost speaker for the church a defender of the resurrection and the truth of the scripture he's been in ministry for years he released a book in 2012 called undaunted the early life of josh mcdowell and it's only at the age of 73 did he bring out some of the things he's been he's been through in his life he tells the story that at six years old he was molested by a man called wayne who fiddled on him for seven years he came into his bedroom did those terrible sexual abuse to him he went and told his mother and the mother said shush don't talk like that you will get in trouble here and she smoldered it those days in those days that is what they did and he had to live with a lack of support from his mother being hurt by this man for seven years and eventually moved on with his life this is a wonderful thing he's written about it which tells me he never got over it but his ministry shows he definitely got he definitely got past it because he recognized that it's not men who control your life but it's jesus who controls your life and instead of rehearsing his head in his ministry he rehearsed his healing and showed how much god has done in his life and that's more of a testimony than to be telling about your head and your lifelong story he didn't go and say i'm the man and let me tell you i was six years da 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 he didn't start there he ended there in the hope that it will help someone don't rehearse your heads rehearse your healing the next point is withdraw from illegitimate sources of pain sometimes if you are hurting you need to get away from the source of the head you need to get away because it's not god's will for instance if your spouse is physically abusing you you can't say i will take it for jesus has a higher purpose that's that's not being wise no in jesus name get away that's not the will of god that's not god's purpose marriage is meant to be helping each other support each other nurturing each other not beating each other sometimes you need to withdraw from that i believe in my marriage but if there's repeated physical abuse repeated unfaithfulness and you are deeply hurt and your self-esteem and your dignity is broken sometimes you need to move on if you are working in a place and there's constant sexual harassment i don't believe you should put up with that it's not the will of god and if you are trapped in a job like joseph was trapped in such in such a situation you need to trust god for special grace but in a normal situation you should withdraw jesus sent the disciples out 70 and the 12. he sent them out the 70 and the 12. and he told them this in the book of uh, matthew listen to what he told them he said if anyone will not welcome you Matthew chapter 10 verse 14 if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words leave that home or town and shake the dust of your feet if they don't welcome you quietly withdraw don't make a scene shrug your shoulders and be on your way and so there are times when there's abuse in your life and you are being hurt for no reason you should withdraw from that and you should move on next point revenge is not sweet it's 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 bitter forgiveness is sweet revenge is not sweet it's bitter forgiveness is sweet they tell you to take revenge is sweet it's actually not 
Revenge hurts you more than the person you are taking revenge on. Revenge hurts you more than the person you are taking the revenge on. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Verse 27 to 29. It says, But I say to you, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do do good to those who hate who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. When you forgive, you gain strength. When you forgive, you gain strength. And sometimes when you think you're forgiving someone, and you are becoming weak. No, it takes strong people to forgive. Weak people can forgive. You've got to remember that when someone hurts you, the reason they are hurting you is because they themselves are hurting. Revenge destroys the life of the one who takes revenge. I know it's not easy to do it if you are in a situation, but somehow, if you can make this the fabric of your life, you can be an overcomer. The next point is pain and hurt sometimes won't relent until you repent. Sometimes we go through pain because it's our own making. If you've made some bad choices, it could be that you are hurt. You might be in debt today and you might be saying, I'm hurting. The devil has got my money. Come on. No, chances are the devil didn't go to the bank put the card in the in the in the what do you call it machine and took the money and spent it no you spend the money so if you are hurting you you might need to withdraw from no one except your behavior and until you repent the pain won't relent jonah was in the belly of the whale not because the devil put him there he didn't listen to god he made some wrong decisions then in the belly of the whale he cries out to god and god heard him and cause the fish to vomit him out. Today, you could be brought out if you say, okay, I give up. I will go your way. Maybe you are doing something you shouldn't be doing, involved in something you shouldn't be involved in. And you say, I know exactly where the head is coming from. They say, if you keep hitting your head on the wall, look for the door. Next point, transform your head. Don't transfer it. What we tend to do with hurt is we tend to talk to everybody about it and we tend to put it on them and infect them we make them angry with the people who hurt us we end up with a whole community of bitter people bitter churches bitter nations but we've got to transform what happens to us we've got to transform what happens to us one of the most beautiful gemstones in the world is a pearl a pearl is formed when a grain of sand sneaks inside an oyster and it irritates the oyster and it hurts the oyster. So the oyster doesn't open itself up and die and let that head out. The oyster covers that grain of sand with a coating and another coating and another coating until over a period of time, no longer does the grain of sand hurt the oyster by the, but the oyster has taken that head and turned it into something beautiful. When Jesus comes into your life, he enables you to transform things that could otherwise hurt you. And today, God wants to work in you. He wants to heal your head. He wants to heal your life. He wants to restore you. If you are listening to me today, and you haven't handed over ownership of your life to Christ. I want to encourage you to do that. God wants to change your life. He wants to transform your life. He wants to do something in you. I'm going to pray a simple prayer with you. It's your prayer. I'm going to give you the words. You are the heart to it. And pray sincerely from the depth of your heart. Say this after me. Say, Father, today I recognize that I'm a sinner who needs a savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Have mercy on me. I believe with all my heart that you died for me and you rose again. And with my mouth, I confess your lordship over my life. Change me. Make me a new person. Change me from the inside. Help me live for you. 
fill me with your Holy Spirit and write my name in the last book of life in heaven. If you pray this simple prayer, I want you to know you are born again, you are saved, you are now a child of God. Welcome into God's family. Heaven is rejoicing because of you. I want to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to you for tuning into this program. And I trust that this broadcast has been a blessing to you. I look forward to coming your way next time. But before I sign off, I want you to always remember, if you want a life that is going to be as abundant as possible without chaos and confusion, don't do it any other way. Do it by God's will. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Life Television program. We hope you have been blessed by the teaching. Tune in to our next program on the same channel and the same time next week. You are cordially invited to visit Treasure House ICGC for our Sunday morning church services at the New Horizon Center, South Lodge Avenue, adjacent to the Pollard's Hill Library, CR4 1LT. For ministry products and other information, please contact us on 0208-355-3461 or send an email to pastor at treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. You may also visit our website www.treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. Our service times are as follows, Sunday 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and Wednesday 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. You can also download our ministry app, Gracious Awaye, to listen to Pastor Gray's messages from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. May God richly bless you.